Okay, so just before we begin the daf, a quick hakdama, a quick introduction to the fifth parak, Tomid Anishrat. This fifth parak, this fifth parak. Can you guys hear me? You guys yeah, can hear yeah. me, right? Yeah. Yeah, we hear you. So Perfect. this fifth, this fifth parak is the beginning of the five parakim that discuss the carbon Pesach. In the ancient times, meaning going back all the way to the Rishonim, this Masechta was actually split into two, Pesach, P- Pesach 1 and Pesach 2. The first four parakim plus the 10th parak, the first four parakim, which was about Erev Pesach and, the, and how to get rid of Chometz, and the 10th parak, which is about Pesach night and the Seder, and the middle parakim, the five parakim that, that discuss the carbon Pesach, was separate, was a separate Mesechta. Why is it that carbon Pesach gets five parochim? Why this carbon out of all other Kabonis? This carbon is the only carbon which is a mitzvah say a positive commandment that if you do not keep it, if you do not bring the carbon, you're chayiv karis. You're chayiv to be cut off. And the answer is in this week's parish of the, that we're about to lane. This week's Pasha's Pasha's bow is the Pasha of Carbon Pesach, and it has an amazing words. It starts off, Daber el kol adas Yisrael, and speak to the assemblage of all Yisrael. It is the first time in the Torah that the Torah uses the words adas Yisrael, the, the assemblage of Israel. And maybe the reason is, I've thought about this before, is because the mitzvahs that come prior to this, the first mitzvah is, is if you have children, that's only a mitzvah on men. The second mitzvah is this meal of circumcision is also on, only for men. The third mitzvah is gida the, the sciatic nerve, that we're not allowed to eat the sciatic nerve, but that's a mitzvah kiyumus, not a mitzvah chiyuvus, meaning you're not mechayev. If you go your whole life and do not eat meat, then you never have the problem of eating the sciatic nerve. It's only if you decide to eat meat that I'm not allowed to eat the sciatic nerve. But it's not a mitzvah that you have to do. The fourth mitzvah is uh, to be mekadish to chodesh. Mekadish to chodesh is, first of all, only on men and only on great men, as the Mitzvah kind of said. The first mitzvah that is on men, women, children, your servants, and anybody in the entire nation is carbon Pesach, which is the reason why I think that the Torah uses the first time the word Adas Yisrael is to give this idea that this is the first one where everybody in India is involved. And because it is the lodestone of what we are as a people, we are a people built on the story of the Exodus. I always make the point that we were in we were in slavery we were in we were in we were in slavery for perhaps uh, officially 400 years but in real slavery for 210 years the Torah Kedosh talks about our slavery for all of one parak we don't focus on the slavery that we were slaves we focus on the fact that we are free people we don't call it slavery, we call it exodus. We were, we were enslaved, but we were never slaves. Right. And that is maybe the important lesson, and that is what the Karma Pesach comes to tell us. That we're a free people who freely come to serve our Kodesh Baruch Hu. So that's what's going on over here. So now we are holding on 58B2. 58B2, the left-hand column, the bottom of the left-hand column, about 10 lines from the bottom. Tanu Rabbana, Tanu Rabbana, Minayin Shaloyeh Dov Koydim Latomit Shel Shaka. How do we know that nothing, none of the service, nothing comes before the carbon tomit? What is the carbon tomit? We say it every day. If you have your siddur, it says Sabbath Bnei Yisov V'Yamar To Aleim Carbon Es Carbon Ilachmi Di Yishai Reach Ni Choichi Tishmu Lahaku Liba Moyadoi. We are martyr to him. Zehu Isha. This is the fire offering. I shall give you Hashem that you shall bring. Oh, you offer up to Hashem. Kibel Simbene Shana, a sheep that's a year old. Timimim, perfect. 
Shnayim layoim, twice a day, oila as an oila offering, tamid forever, forever, which meant that twice a day, in the morning, tamid baboike, utamid benu ha'aboyim, as we're going to see in a minute, the Lashem benu ha'aboyim, it was brought, it was, it was brought twice a day. So how do we know that the tamid was the first covet? Was the last covet? Was the last covet? Was the last covet? Turn around. Double point in the shaka. Says, and you shall raise. But I hear that at the meeting, was not good. I hear it in our in our in our psukim that we said. Okay. So now. The Gemara says, "My Tamuda, how do you see from the word oila that it means tamid? Amarava ha ha oila. It says the oila, the oila rishayna, the first oila that's mentioned, and we just said it. Be a martu elohem, and you should say to you, kibba simbene shana, a sheep one year old, timimim shnayim layon oila samid, an oila tamid." It's a kebis and it's what it say, and they, and that's what it, it it says over here, okay. Now, so says the pasuk, "Uminayin chain dava korev echa acha tamid shabeno abayin." And how do I know that nothing is brought after the tamid of the afternoon? Beno abayin means afternoon. The Talmud lima because it says, "Vihit olel chal chel beyashlomim." And he should burn on it the fats of the shalomim. Okay, so that's what it says over there in the in the post. Okay, so now, so it says the Gemara, my tamudai. How do you see that a pasuk that's talking about the morning tamid that may should be brought nothing that can be brought after the after the afternoon tamid? shalomim. On the first tumid, once you bring the first tumid, you should bring all your shalomims, you should bring all your other kabanais, the loyal to shalomim, but not on its counterpart, the second one, shall you bring any more offerings. In other words, in between the two tumids of the morning and the afternoon, that's when you fill it up with all your offerings. Mask of Larava. Maybe it's only shalomims, which are kodshe kalim, which are of lower sanctity, in that they are allowed to be offered, they're allowed to be slaughtered anywhere within the courtyard, as opposed to the north of the courtyard, which was saved for, which was saved for the Kaidish Kadashim. right? In other words, I said, Han Oilos, not Matnaik Nakrif. But maybe the oilers are allowed to be brought, the oilers in which are completely brought onto the altar, they yeah. are completely burnt, and nothing is given over to the Kayan to eat. Maybe those can be brought even after the second oiler, the oiler of Shobeno Abayim. El Amarava, Ha Shalomim. It says with the extra hay, Ha Shalomim. Aleo Hashlim Kol Kavana is Kulam. On it, on the morning tumid, you shall complete all the sacrifices, all the kabonis, all the offerings. So now, here's the thing. We know that logically, we just said nothing is brought, nothing is, nothing is brought, nothing is brought after the afternoon tumid. And as always in every rule, there's now an exception because we know that the carbon Pesach is yes brought after the afternoon tumid. So says the Gemara, Tan Rabbanon Tumid Paidam Le Pesach, the carbon tumid, that means the afternoon tumid, the tumid Shalbeno Abayim is brought before the Pesach, before the carbon Pesach. The carbon Pesach, Pesach Kaidam Le Kitaris. The Kabbalah Pesach is brought there before the Kataris. Just like, just like the Tumid is twice a day, so too the bringing of the Kataris, which is the frankincense, the fire that was brought up, the smells, or as I told Jeff, the marijuana of its time was brought up, okay, was brought up once in the morning and once in the afternoon. 
In fact, that's if in if you guys look in your siddur, in the next portion right before Tunnel Rabbanon, it says Vihiktir Olaf Aaron Kitayus Samim Baboike Baboike, and Aaron shall bring up the Kitayus twice a boike by boike in the morning in the morning and the next person says with Alan Aaron is an era is been while by him and he would light the candles the lights turn on the electricity in the afternoon yaktireni kateris tomim in the play Hashem the day is a and bring again and offer up again the in the frankincense again in the afternoon so just like the Tommy was brought twice a day so to the kateris was brought twice a day so Tanu Rabbon on Tomid kind of the Pesach. The Tomid, the afternoon Tomid was brought before the Pesach. Pesach kind of the Ketiris. The Pesach was brought before the afternoon Ketiris. Ketiris Kedemus Leiv Neiros. And the Ketiris came before the lighting of the lamps in the afternoon. Even though we just had a posik that we just started <laughs> by the Siddur, it says, V'alos Aaron es Haneiros. Aaron lit the candles which meant that the Qataris came after the Neiris, according to the Pasuk. And the Gemara is going to ask this question. But right now the Bryce is saying, first came the Qataris in the afternoon, and then came the Menorah. Now we're on the Daf, Nun Testament Aleph. So it says the Gemara, Let the thing, the Pesach, which is stated, Be'erev toichlu matzis in the evening you shall eat. Be'erev, I mean, it says Shom Tizbach is a Pesach be'erev, and so you shall slaughter the Pesach in the evenings. And it also says V'shachtu oisei kol kahal adas Yisrael beinu abayim. This is the word adas Yisrael, and the entire congregation of the assembly of Israel shall slaughter it in the afternoon. So the on regarding the Pesach. Number one and two in the art scroll of na, amend on fifty nine a one. You can see the psukim. So there you see that the pesach says the word erev evening and beinu abayim in the afternoon. Let the thing the pesach which happens to say afternoon and evening would come before. Let it be delayed. Ladovish leinema by be erev elo beinu abayim bubat. Upon until the thing, the second Tomid, which only says Bain Ha'abayim, right? It says over there Bain Ha'abayim. In other words, it says there's a Kebes Hasheni, and the second sheet Tase you shall do Bain Ha'abayim in the afternoon. Kemincha Saboike, just like the offering, the mincha that you brought in the morning. So that means the carbon Tomid in the afternoon says Bain Ha'abayim. The Pesach says Beno Abayim and Boerev. So since the Pesach says two length, two length, two lashinus of evening and afternoon, obviously it should come after the Tumid shall Beno Abayim. Frank the Gemara, if that's the case, if that's your logic, why the Pesach comes after the Tumid shall Beno Abayim? Yehochi Ketores Veneros Nami Nidvu Le Pesach. If that's the case, then the Ketores and the Menorah lamps. Should be brought also before the Pesach. Yochad Dovel Shenema by Be'erev Ubeinu Abayim. Let the thing, the Pesach, which says in the app in the evening and in the afternoon, two languages of afternoon and evening, come after the Dovel Shloim Nema by Elo Beinu Abayim Bovat. It should come after the Ketayis and the Menorah, on which it only says in the afternoon. The Pesach says again, Uba Halos Aren Es Haneiros Beinu Abayim. And Aaron should should light up the lights in the afternoon. Yakti Rena, he shall offer it up. Ketiris Tumid, the Ketiris Tumid, which means it only has a language of Beno Abayim. The carbon Pesach has two lang two languages. It has Beno Abayim, afternoon, and Erev, evening. So clearly, the Pesukim seem to be pushing us that the last thing should be the Pesach, and before that should be the Ketiris and the Menorah. So how come this price that says that in fact the Ketiris and the Neiros come after the Pesach? And for the Gemara, Shani Hosam, because the me the me at Rachmana Oisai, because the Pasuk over there puts in the word Oisai, it, because it says like this with regarding to the coin arranging the Menorah, it says Mi'ereb Yad Boiker, 
from the evening until the morning. In other words, you should light the candles and make sure there's enough fuel to, so that the base of Migdash would be lit all night. So in fact, that the city of light is not Paris, the city of light is Yerushalayim, because it should be completely lit up. And in fact, there are other Gemaras that said that from the light of the base of Migdash at night, you were able to see many, many miles in the, di in the distance. They are a like it which means tain la midosa give the minari its full measure of oil should the hey de lekes me erabai bike so that it should remain lit from night from the evening to the to the morning the real question is will the third base of english have electricity or not i don't know the answer to that question but it's a very interesting question okay dover achel you still gonna have the minari though you're still gonna have the minari but the question is Will it have electricity as well? That's a good question. Tad Dover Acher, Ein Cha Boit Hoshek, Kesher of Meyer of Aboike El Zubulvad. Another, or there's no Aboike, there's no service that is valid from all the way in the evening, all the way to the morning, except for this, which means that by definition, the Minoiro has to be the last thing that you do. Obviously, my Tamo. When is the pasuk teach this last thing that it's that this is this is the only avoider that lasts overnight? Um, crawl, the pasuk says, "Yarech oisay Aaron me ereb aboike," and Aaron and his son shall arrange oisay it from evening till morning. Oisay me ereb aboike, the menorah from the evening till the morning, the ain davar acha me ereb aboike, and nothing else from the evening until the morning. And that teaches us that the menorah is the last thing. The ikish ketoris lenaris, and the ketoris, the frankincense, is is connected, is compared to the menorah. Where is it compared? Again, we go back to what we do during kabonos. It says the bahalos aron esaneris ben agbayim, and aron will light the like the candles by in the in the afternoon. Yakti Rando Katiris Tavit and he will offer up the Katiris Tavit. <laughs> so the same plastic that brings about lighting the neighbors also brings about about the Katiris. Right over there. I don't know if you can see it, but there there's the plastic. Okay, the plastic says right over there. The neighbors are lit and then the Katiris. By definition, what? right before Peter Maktiris. Yes, which meant that the neighbors of the afternoon are connected. So therefore, if I can learn from the word of Oisoi by Neiros, that it is from the evening to the morning, which means that it is the last thing that is obviously done, which means that the Katiris is done right before it. So Frank the Gemara, Vitanya Kikoshua, and Arise, what? I don't have to leave here. Yeah, they told me the same thing. The neighbors comes the Pesach, and the lighting of the menorah comes before the Pesach. So this Baraisa switches everything. A different Baraisa. This one says, first I have the Tumit, then I have the Katiris, then I have the Neiris, and only then do I bring the Pesach. So this one switched everything up. The previous price has said, you have the Tomit, then you have the Pesach, then you have the Katiris, and then you have the Neiris. Here, this one says, I have the Tomit, then I have the Katiris, the Neiris, the lights, and then the Pesach. So, hi, uh, so it's, of course, the Gemara says, this price says, let the thing, i.e. the Pesach, which says in the afternoon and the evening, be delayed. All the other things, the place and the menorah, which only happens in the afternoon. So therefore, it's a fact that the Marvach But what do you and breathe. Do? just learned before, which is oisoi, right? And we learned before that oisoi the has to have the shear, the full measure of oil to be lit the whole night. And so, therefore, it is the last thing brought, and the Katiris, which is compared to it with the Hekish, is brought right before it, so the face of the comes before. 
Exactly. Like tomorrow, hi, oi, soy, this, oi, soy, oi, you need it for something else. Let me ute a boy bishop if name. It teaches us out something to to exclude the inside avoider. Remember, the base of English was split into two. It was split into the courtyard, the azora, and the heichal, the inner sanctuary. The inner sanctuary had the mizbeach hapanimi. Okay, the mizbeach hazov. The outside had the big the big mizbeach, the big altar, the mizbeach anechoshes, the copper. The copper, the copper, the copper um, altar. So now, what are we talking about over here? And what is it that is done on inside service? The Ketiris. The Ketiris is done, right? The Ketiris is done. The frankincense is sent up on the inside altar. I might have thought to say, Yaktireno, like our pasuk, we've been saying the whole time over here. And when Aaron lights the can- lamps in the afternoon, he shall burn it. The ketores, aimo naglik neiros bereisha b'hodin naglik ketores. I would say, therefore, the pasuk seems to be leading us to come to the conclusion that first you light the candles, you light the lamps, the menores, and only afterwards do you go ahead. And light the katoiris. You sent up the katoiris. Miyut Rachmana Oisoi comes the Pasik to tell us Oisoi that in fact the neighbors are last because they have to last the whole night. And therefore the katoiris comes before the neighbors. I, the Pasik says, seems to say the other way, but Frank the Gemara, now we're on 59A2. Elo Beno Abayim Yakturena Lomali. But then how do you explain the Pasik? Which seems to be saying you light the candles first and then the kataris. the medalic at the time that you light the menoris, to hey kataris, the kataris should have already been burnt because the way it reads over here about the menoira, you shall light the candles, the, the lamps in the afternoon, that you that the Ketiris is already brought. In other words, one is a language of what you're going to do. One is a language of essentially that you already did. In the possible world, it goes from future tense to past tense. So that's the idea, telling us the Ketiris is brought together with the Menorah, but the Ketiris is the trigger that now tells me it's time to light light up the lights. Now, Tanu Rabbonin. The Rabbonin say, There's nothing that's done before the morning. Tomid, that is the first sacrifice that is brought. Ela Ketiris Bavad, except for the morning Ketiris. If you remember, I said that the Ketiris is split Half of it is brought in the morning, and half of it is brought in the afternoon. Shanema ba 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 The pasuk says like this. I'm again. We're going to look at the siddur. The hikter alav aron ketores samim ba boiker ba boiker. Hetivu esan ba boiker ba de ba boiker ba boiker. And he should. And Aaron will bring up the ketores morning by morning. What's the two, two lessons of the morning? The yiktim ketiris dovel shenema by boika by boika. Let's give precedence to the ketiris, which it says morning the morning in the morning in the morning. The ksir be yikter all of Aaron ketiris samim ba boika ba boika, and Aaron shall burn upon it the inner altar of the ketiris in the morning in the morning. The dovel shleinema by ela boika echad. To the Talmud, which only says once the lost in morning, because beforehand, what we say in the morning before it, it only says it once. So and there's nothing that's withheld that is done after the afternoon. 
except for the Kataris, the menorah lamps, and once a year, the Pesach, the carbon Pesach. And the, the, the sacrifices of the Mechusa Kippurim on Erev Pesach. She tables Shani the Oichlas Pisle Lerb, who then tables a second time and eats his basic at night. What are we talking about? If a person becomes Thomas, a Thomas Mace, let's call it a Thomas, not even Thomas, Thomas Mace. Mace. Let's talk about a Mitzayra. Thank you, Daddy. Right, let's talk about a Mitzayra. A Mitzayra is Tome, is, what is a Mitzayra? Somebody who gets the biblical version of leprosy. For lack of a better word, we're not exactly sure what Mitzayra is, thank God. We don't get it. We see it's things that have come about with Sairah because of the issue of lush and horror, of talking bad words, of, of gossiping, etc., about other people. And he, uh, heaven forbid a person got Sairah. For seven days, he was excluded from the community. He had, on the seventh day, he was table in the mikvah. He was immersed in the mikvah. When he came out, theoretically, he's already tar. Nonetheless, we have a rule. If somebody is tummy for seven days and then this table in the mikvah, when he comes out of the mikvah, he's called a tavul yoin. He's called a tavul yoin. What is a tavul yoin? A tavul yoin is somebody that has to wait, has to what do you call it? has to wait until Harif Shemesh, until the after, till the evening. Then he can eat teruma. If he's a koyin, he was allowed to eat teruma. But he was table on the seventh. Since a Mitzayra must also bring his kabonis, his kabonis are an oil, a chatas, and an osha. He had to bring those clearly the next day in the morning of the eighth day. So he was called Mechusa Kippurim to the eighth day. Now here's the problem. If somebody was got, became a Mitzayra eight days before Pesach, so he went through his seven days. And on your gimel, on and on your gimel, that means two days before Pesach, he tabled in the mikvah, and therefore on erev Pesach he had he was a mechutzik to put him and he had to bring his sacrifices, the oil of the chattis and the ocean. and the day went crazy and he forgot to bring it, and then they brought the carbon shel ben by the tumid shel ben by they brought the afternoon tumid, so now he's fafuched, he can't bring his kabbalas. Here's the problem. If he can't bring his kabonis, he won't be able to eat the carbon Pesach the ne- that night. But it gets worse than that. The truth is, it's not just that he can't eat the carbon Pesach. The truth is, he can't even shech the carbon Pesach. He can't slaughter the carbon Pesach. Why can't he slaughter the carbon Pesach? I'll tell you why. Because the only way you're allowed to slaughter the carbon Pesach is only on someone who's capable of eating the carbon Pesach. If he's a mechusser, can put him and he didn't bring his kabonis and it's already the afternoon of Erev Pesach. And since if he didn't bring his kabonis, he won't be able to eat the carbon Pesach. If he's not able to eat the carbon Pesach, you're not allowed to bring the carbon Pesach for him. And if he can't bring the carbon Pesach, we've got a problem not bringing the carbon Pesach is a chayiv chorus. You can get chorus, you can get in seat, you can get cut off. So this guy is in major trouble. So we give him it out. We say even a mechusa kippurim, somebody who forgot to bring his carbons in the earlier part of the day, we're going to let him off the hook where even though we brought the carbon shalbein ha'abayim, we brought the tamit shalbein ha'abayim, you can still bring his kabonis. And midrabonim, rabbinically speaking, he has to go to the mikvah again. After he brings the kabbonis, he has to go to the mikvah again, even though, biblically speaking, he went to the mikvah on the seventh day. You have to do it on the eighth day. Go. No problem. Rab, Rabbi Shmo, Yishmo, B'nai Shor, Rabbi Yechon, and B'roi Ka'imeh, Af Mechus HaKippurim B'Shayim Ois HaShada. The truth of the matter is, anybody who is and the Chusse Kippurim was missing his kabonis after a seven day Tuma of Mitzara, right? During the rest of the year, and, and the same thing, you're allowed to bring it late 
even after the carbon tummit, and he will have to go to the mikveh again in order to be able to eat kochim at night, to eat the sacrificial meat even at night. So says the Gemara, according to the Tanakhama, who's talking about the carbon Pesach, Yoboi Asei Da Pesach Sheyesh Poikaris, let the positive commandment of the Pesach, which carries the penalty of Karis, the Yitzchad Asei the Shalomo Sheyem Poikaris, and override the, 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 the positive commandment of the afternoon Tumid, which does not have a Chai of Karis. Elo, What's the strength of this positive commandment against the other positive commandment? I have a positive commandment that I'm not allowed to bring anything else after the Tomid, after the Tomid, how can he go ahead and say that every Mechusa Kippurim, anybody who's missing their Kabbalists is allowed to bring after we bring the afternoon Tomid? Why? Pesach, I understand, because Pesach is a mitzvah, I say, Shechai of Karis is a positive command that carries the punishment of Karis, of being cut off. But every other case is not, if I don't have the mechus, if I don't bring my kabbalah, I wait till the next day, big deal. It's not a, it's not a, it's Isurei Kachim, that you could eat the Kachim at night, is only a positive command, is a, is a regular positive command that does not carry Karis. So why do we push off the positive command of no more sacrifices after the afternoon tumid and put and allow us to do the mechutzah kapurim of any other time? Amar Ravina, Amar Rav Chizda, says Ravina, Amar Rav Chizda, hocha b'chatos ha'oif askinon. We're dealing over a case of the bird chatos of the poor person, of the poor mitzayra. She'ein l'mizbeach el adama where the Mizbeach only gets its blood. The birds, as you know, are not shechted. How are birds killed? The thing with Malika. The thumbnail went along its neck and, and essentially somehow went like this. Jerry seems to be an expert on the subject. So, cuts it like this, and the blood was then applied. But that meant that it itself, the bird itself, does not go on the altar because since it did not get shechita, it gets its neck broken essentially it does not go on the it does not go on the mizbeach since it doesn't go on the mizbeach it's not a problem when it's done the whole problem of the carbon of the tumid of the afternoon that nothing should be done after the tumid afternoon is offerings i.e offerings that go on the altar since the bird chatos is is broken by the neck and therefore does not go on the altar itself. I don't care when I bring it, as long as I bring it by day, it's not a problem. So I could go ahead and bring it afterwards. Right? I can tell you even if it's a behema. Ah, a behema does go on the altar, right? It means that the Koyan put the offering and let it remain there <clears throat> on top of the altar without burning it. 59A3. As you know, there's this thing called Lino. It's staying overnight. You now allow sacrificial meats and fats and all of their stuff to stay longer than the night. You have to burn it up on the altar overnight. Okay, you have to make sure it's burnt up. However, there's an exception, like there's an exception to just about every single rule. That if you bring it to the top of the altar and then you forget to burn it, it's okay. It doesn't have any more problem of Lena being left over. You could burn it the next day. Why? Because where does the burning take place? The burning takes place on the top of the altar. Since I brought it on the top of the altar, the rule is if it's possible to do it, if it's possible to do it, meaning it's already where it's supposed to be, on top of the altar, it's as if it's already gone ahead and burnt. Because once something is brought on top of the altar, it's not allowed to come back down. That's the rule. It's not, it's it's not, not possible, not, Lina. That's right, it's not possible, but why? I, I, it was Lena, Daddy, right? I did it. The answer is, is once something is brought up on top of the Mizbeach, it's not allowed to come right. down. Right. Since 
it's oymid, therefore, since it's already on it and it can't come down, it inevitably is going to be more burnt. If something is inevitable to happen, right? We have the same rule by a contract. There's a man the that says, Shtar voice. A star, a contract that's already written and signed. It just hasn't been given over. It's standing to be given over. It's as if it was given over. The same thing by the Mincha, who say, if I have the Kamitsa, and therefore I have the grains, it's and it's standing there to be boiled, to be mixed up. Bu'ula, even if it's not at the end, for some reason we forget to mix it up, it's okay, the Mincha is still good. But if the grain isn't there, then it's ma'akiv. As long as it's there already and it can't go anywhere else, that's it. So the power is yes, Jerry. Why, why by kedushin? By, by, yeah. by that when you give, you have to give over the ksuba that she has to actually possess. Oh. Right here is different. Okay. So therefore, because it's a very good question. Jerry asked the question: If a star is oimid ligva, it's kegayv dami. That if it's written, it's as if it's going in. Why by kedushin under the chuppah does the kala have to take the ksuba? Have to take the ksuba, and she has to take full possession of it. In fact, from that moment on, she always needs to know where the ksuba is. The answer to that question is, the answer to that question is, is because kedushin has one unbelievable difference. It's the only time where a person is giving herself away. She's selling herself. It's not. It's the gavra is giving away the gavra as opposed to a gavra that's giving away a chefza. It's not a real estate deal. It's a person giving your, the person away, as it were. That's why we have to give her a ring. That's yes, why have to, have there has to be consideration for what she's about to do. That's different. To show you how that is, way back in the day when I got married, there was a rash of people that were stealing the checks from the chosen and Kala. So they used to get back in the late 80s and early 90s. So we used to give over the checks you got at the wedding, you gave it over to somebody. In this case, we gave it over to my uncle Mordechai, Zechenu Lebracha. Lo and behold, we give it to him. He heads home, this is before cell phones. And then my wife and I realize we can't find the ksuba. So we go crazy until we realize that uncle Mordechai probably took it home with him in the, with the bag of checks. So there's me and my wife sitting in the lobby because we can't go anywhere else. We can't be, we go to the lobby. It takes them an hour to get home. And then we call them up and say, Hi, Uncle Mordechai, it's Yitzchak. Oh, Yitzchak, Mazel Tov, beautiful wedding. Well, Uncle Mordechai, by any chance, did you take off the ksuba? Anyways, he looks through the checks, and there's the ksuba. And he starts laughing like Jerry and everybody else is laughing. He says, can I have your wife? <laughs> and my wife made my uncle Mordechai Zechel Lebracher Shliach, and we're the Ksubis and the whole thing, and only then can we proceed with the rest of the evening. So, this is a rule of life. The Ksuba is the one exception to that rule of you have to know where the Ksuba is. Okay? Because it is, a, it is, it is, and, it, 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 and when we get the Kedushin, this is one of the great things about Kedushin, is that it is a mix, same thing with Gittin, with divorces. It's a mix of Isurin, of Isur, because she became an Asian Sish, or to free her from Asian Sish. At the same time, it's monetary in nature because Shtoris contracts are monetary in nature. The difference between them changes the rule. That tension between Isurin and monetary, the two separate laws which come together when you're talking about marriage and divorce, changes the rules exactly. But in the normal rules, if it's there, if it could be done, it's as if it's already done. So but let's go further here. Okay, the Ika Asham, but remember I said the Mitzvah needs to bring the Oila, the Chatos, and the Asham. So we figured out what to do about this Chatos over here. We figured it out. It's not a problem. You could do it after the Tumat Shabbat Abayim. It's not a problem. The Ika Asham, but there is the Asham that has to bring, and the Asham is an animal, and the Asham, there is no ifs, ands, or buts, has to go on the altar. 
That's why the Kasham leaves it overnight. What does he do? He leaves it overnight on the altar without burning it. And since he leaves it overnight, overnight without burning it, it's not a problem with Lino. It's not, we go, we've got an out. But according to Rav Chizda, how are you going to get out of it? Who says it's only about birds? He said, I'll tell you how we get out of the Chathas because the Chathas is the bird. It's the poor man's Mitzayra, which we break. And therefore, it doesn't go on the Mizbeach. So you can do it after the Tomit Shulban Rabbi. But the Hashem is an animal. What's Rav Chizda going to say? Amri, Shikara, Bashamai. Very simple. Who said you have to do it in order? The Hashem was brought before the Tomit Shulban Rabbi. It was the Chathas that's brought afterwards. The Eka Oila. So he says, yeah, but what do you do about the Oila? Right? Remember, I said there's three Kabbalists the Chathas, the Hashem, and the Oila. The Chitema, Oila, Loi, Ma'akva. If you're going to say the Oila, is not ma'akev, meaning he gets atonement. Remember, he's mechutza kipurim. He's mechutza, he's missing his atonement of the of the, of the animals. Mm-hmm. I can say by the fact that he brings his chatas, his sin offering, and the osham, which is the other sin offering. Once the oil is not ma'akev, and he gets, and he gets, and he gets, he gets his atonement. The Tanya, but we learned that Rabbi Shmuel, the Shmuel, the Shmuel, the says that the oil does withhold the atonement. Because it says we learned in a brace, Rabbi Shmuel ben Oisha, Rabbi Yochanan ben Beraika, Oimeh, Kishem shechatos sebashomim ma'ak v'noisai. Just like the mitzvahs shechatos and asham, withholding them does not allow him to eat the sacrificial foods, the basal kachim. Right? Kach oila ma'ak v'soldis the oila withhold him from eating the kachim. So then, with the chit, if you want to say shetabrig oila soli, so then say the same answer that you gave by asham. That the oil was brought before the carbon shalbena abayim, the tamid shalbena abayim, and the only thing that wasn't brought before the tamid shalbena abayim was the chatas, and we've got an out on the chatas. The e so says the gemara, me kabra oil is kaid on the chatas rishon, brought before the chatas. Well, Tanya, you can't go out of order. Order the pasuk says by chatas vehikir v'sashel a chatas rishayna. You shall offer the one that is for a chatas first. But what is the Pasuk saying with the first we shine up? If you telling me to teach me that the Chathas needs to come before the Oila, that's not necessary. Because it already says in the Torah right there, but the second one should be the Oila offering as prescribed, meaning that the first one is not the Oila, the first one is what? The Chathas. Right, El Azeb Binyan Av Lachol Chatis. This extra Chatis, this Rishon, is a Binyan Av. Is something to teach us to all Chatises in the Torah. Sheyu Kaidemes Lachol Oilus Habayim Leim. That all Chatises need to come before any Oilus that are that need to be brought with it. That means if you need to bring a Chatis and an Oilus, guess what comes first? The Chatis. The example of this is a woman who gave birth. Right, has to bring a chattis and oil. She brings her chattis first and then the oil. Right? The Kaimalon, the Afilu Chattis Oiv, Kaidemis La Oil Behemo. And the principle is even the chattis oiv, even the poor person's chattas is brought before the oil. So Elamai, we've got a problem now. How could what are we gonna do with oil? Oil has to go up, it has to be brought. How could you tell me that the Mechusa Kipurim are allowed to be brought? After the Tomit Shalbeinu Abai, Amarava Shani Oila Mitzayir. The oil of the Mitzayir is different. The Rachmana Amar, because the pasuk says we're now on Nun Tes Amid Beis Fifty Nine B One. The Hela Koyin is oil. The Koyin shall bring up the oil. Pasuk Shahala Kvar. Once again, that he already brought up. That he already brought up the oil before the Chatos. The Pasik again talks in the past The Hela Koyin is Oila. Why the word Hela translated two different ways as being has being brought up or has brought up. In this case, it means has brought up. So therefore, this is the real case. The Tsaira is different, that it doesn't matter to us what order it's brought up. Every other case. In the Torah, Chattas is brought before the Oila, like example, 
when a, a woman has a baby, she brings a chattas before the oila. Nitzayra, the words are ambiguous. Since they're ambiguous, you can even bring the oila before the chattas. Something Gemara. Amalei Rav Shem and Rav Shem and Bar Abel Rav Papa Lidi Doch. According to you, that means Malo Mumilo Beroish Shem is Beach that the Tumid was burned. That after the Tumid Shem Ben Abayim was brought, you could put all the leftover stuff on top of the Mizbeach and leave it there overnight, and you don't have a problem of Lino. Kaimin Ba'Pinan Mil Silikanim Dosi Beit Hakolo. Are you telling me? That you have an out, you have a loophole. So we say something that the kahanim to which the kahanim might come to do a misty, the sabri yoyimu who ba'asi lekature, because they might think these these leftover fats are actually new fats from the next day. They're gonna burn it because what happens? They go ahead and they put this stuff up on the top of the mizbeach. Okay, you don't have lino. I'm granting you don't have lino. But now the deer on the Mizbech, now the next morning comes and the day begins and they bring the Tumid and they bring a bunch of other Kabbalists. You know what happens. People get mixed up and now they're going to go ahead and take the stuff from yesterday and they're going to burn it today, which is an absolute Issam in our You're not allowed to do it. We're setting them up to make a huge mistake. We're literally setting them up to make a huge mistake. Just because you have an out doesn't mean you should use an out, right? This is what he called, this is, it's like a saying that's called novel Bereshus Torah. The Torah allows you to do something, but it's still disgusting, right? How could you learn to do this? Amalei, Kahanim Zerizame. Kahanim are very conscientious. They're very diligent. Don't worry about it. They'll put it in a separate section on top. They'll mark it off. Something about Amalei Ravashi, Rav Kahano, Ravami, Rav Hunabere, Rav Nasr, Rav Papa, but as long as the sacrificial parts are not burnt, so the Kahanim are not allowed to eat the meat of that sacrifice. The rule is, is that if the Chazit Mishaik, the 24 Matnas Kahuna, if they're getting their presents from the from the Shlomans or anything else, okay, they're allowed, they, the Kahanim get what's the, their things, the Chazit Mishaik, the, the thigh bone, and it's so late that they get to keep it. And they can eat it, but they're not allowed to eat it until the Amurim, the sacrificial parts, are brought up, are, brought, are offered up on the altar, on the Mizbeach. The Tanya, Yochi, Eikahana, Mishoyim, the Chazik, Mishoy, Koy, the Maktaris, Amurim, I might have thought that the Kahanam are already allowed to eat the breast and the thigh of the Shlomim before the burning of the sacrificial parts of the Shlomim. Talmud Laimadir, but the Pasuk says, Vehikter Akayin, it's a Chalim on Mizbeach. The Kayin shall burn the fat on the Mizbeach. And afterwards, the Hadar, and afterwards, the Hoya Chazer, a Chazel Aaron above And only afterwards is the breast be given to Aaron and his sons. So now he continues. The Kama, the Kahanim, the Loy Achubos, and as long as the Kahanim did not eat the, the, beat, the meat, Balam Loy Mishapre, the owners of this carbon who brought it do not get their atonement. Because the atonement works like this. You got to bring the carbon. It has to be shechted correctly. The four avoiders have to be brought. In other words, the the kabbalah of the blood, the, the accepting of the blood, halicha carrying the blood, and the zrika and the throwing of the blood. Right. And after that, there has to be maktir. The, the meats, the sacrificial parts, have to be brought up on the on the on the thing, and the kahanim have to eat their portions. Then the balabas gets his his, his his forgiveness, his atonement. The Tanya, because we learn, and they shall eat them, those who gain atonement from them. That first the Kahanim eat, and then the Balam get, get, get the Kapara. So if that's the case, what it then is accomplished by offering the sacrifices to one who needs the atonement if they're not, if they're not burnt on the altar, if you leave it overnight, if you leave it overnight, they don't get burned, right? We said if you leave it overnight, okay, you don't have lino, but they don't get burned, right? They got to be put in the, we burn them on the, the desh shed in the courtyard. We get rid of them, but they don't get lino. But at the same time, what was the whole purpose why the guy spent hundreds of dollars to buy a carbon and shaft it and bring it to Yerushalayim and shaft it so he should get kapara? He doesn't get a atonement. What's he gaining from this whole business? 
since it's not possible to burn the, the, the limbs of the Chathas after the Tomat Shalbein Abayim, Asuyim Kemish and Nitmu Ayshabdu. That the Rabbanon say, therefore it's like it's lost for Tomei. The Tanya, and therefore in those cases where it's lost for Tomei, obviously the God cannot eat their portions. The Tanya, Yochum Nitmu Aymurim Ayshabdu. I might have thought if the sexual facial parts, the Aymurim, get Tomei or they get lost. The Kahanim are not entitled to the Chazik Rishayk, the breast and the thigh, because they can't eat it. The breast shall be to Aaron and his sons, in any case, in a case where it's in, inadvertent, where it became Tome, where it got lost, the Kahanim could get the food. And now we're on 59b2, we're getting to the mission, and that's where we're going to stop. Right, so now Rav Kahana Rami Baramah Kahana says, I've got a problem. Ksiv Veloyolin Chelev Chagiyad Boike. The fats of my festivals often should not remain overnight till morning. That's the Isra of Lino, right? Loyolin. It shall not be left over. That's Lino, leaving over. Ad Boike Hu Veloyolin. It's only until the morning that the offering may not remain unburnt. It has to be brought up overnight. But that means a whole night you're allowed to go ahead and offer it up on the Mizbeah. And it's written you should burn the fats of the Shlomim and only on it you should but not in the afternoon, not out, but not on the afternoon, Tomid. In other words, how can I go ahead and say all night long I'm allowed to offer up the fats? The sacrificial parts of the shlomim. I we just finished learning on the morning tumid. After I bring the morning tumid, I'm allowed to bring. That's when I got to bring everything, offer everything up, but not after the tumid of the afternoon. Once the tumid of the afternoon goes, the altar is off limits. It's closed down. Said to the Gemara, how nice of He asked it. How many and He asked it. It's weird, the fats were left over from a sacrifice whose blood was thrown on the Mizbeach before of the Tumid. In that case, it's allowed to be burned even after the Tumid. Once its Zerikas Dab was done, its last major avoida, which is Shechita, right? Shechita, Kabbalah, Halicha, and Zerika. Zerika finishes the Avoida. Once I've done that, then I'm saying, once I've done that, now I have, I, I have, I have, I have, one of the, now I have to do is, is burn the, the Emurim, the leftover sacrificial parts. That I'm allowed to do all night long. As long as I did the Zerika before the afternoon Tumid Zerika, before I threw the blood of the afternoon's Tumid. It means it's done at, before the afternoon's Tumid. It's not a problem. Roman lay Rav Safa le Rav, but Rav Safa has a problem. The sacrificial of the, the Pesach carbon, the carbon Pesach shall not remain overnight until the morning. It's until the morning it may not remain. But the whole night it could remain provided it's burned before the morning. But it says the oil of each Shabbos on its Shabbos. That the Shabbos oil is burnt on Shabbos, Veloy oil chol the Shabbos, but a weekday oil is not burnt on Shabbos. That means an oil brought on Friday cannot be burnt on Shabbos. Veloy oil is chol and a weekday oil cannot be burnt on Yomtiv. So how can you say the Pesach, which is brought on Erev Pesach, which is chol, which is a weekday? How can you go ahead and say that I'm allowed to burn it at night? It's sacrificial parts, it's a murim. How am I allowed to burn him on the Mizbeach at night, which is Yontav already, which is the night of Yontav, I'm already sitting to eat the carbon Pesach. How can I burn it at night? Amalei, everybody understand the question? So Amalei, Kavar, Rami, and Nahalu, Rababa, Rabchil, Rabu. This kasha was already posed. The son of Shani Lein, Rabu, answered him, Hachabar, Ba'asr, Shekhali, Yos, B'Shabbos, Haskinah. We're dealing with the Arab Pesach like this year, where the 14th Arab Pesach is going to fall out on Shabbos. 
So you can you have to you could be mocked with you carbon pesach because the carbon pesach is doich shabbos. But that's only shechting the carbon pesach. The murim are not allowed to be brought up on, on shabbos because that's not a chayve chorus. Only the actual shechting of the carbon pesach is a chayve chorus. But the chavle shabbos can even be yontif. For the fats of the second basin may be brought on yontif. Um, because they're not allowed to be brought on Shabbos because that's not Daich Shabbos. Um, Mishum the Chavli Shabbos may even be yontif just because the fats of the of of the of the of the carbon pesach or of, of a or of a carbon that are brought on the Shabbos are allowed to be brought up on yontif. And now Nikdim Olema, we're going to say the high crow by Abba Hosu Shachali Yesh B'Shabbos with the Ksiv. Are we just going to simply say shoehorn and say, well, this specific person is talking about Arab Pesach Shechali Yosh B'Shabbos? Who said it? Amalei, Shemika Lekra, leave the Pesach alone, the Rudach Lekum Because it has to be that way. Because the carbon Pesach must be brought on Shabbos, because it's in Mitzvah Shechaz Man, it's in Mitzvah Shechaz Man Groma, and it's in Mitzvah Shechayiv Karis. So it must be brought on the 14th. And even if it falls out on Shabbos, you go ahead and you have to bring it on the 14th. But that's only the shechting of the Kabbalah Pesach. The actual removal, the bringing up of its emurim, the bringing up of the sacrificial parts, that's not on Shabbos, that's not Doich Shabbos. So therefore, al korchok, with the Pesach, it has to be talking about a Shabbos case, where the carbon itself must be brought on Shabbos, but by definition, its emurim parts cannot be brought on Shabbos. Since they can't be brought on Shabbos, I'm stuck. It must be brought at night. Comes this Pesach and says I'm allowed to bring it up even at night. Very good, everybody. Baruch Hashem.